वेलकम बैक व्यूअर्स आई एम सुरभि उनियाल आई टीच फिलोसफी एट हंसराज कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली एंड वी आर डूइंग अ सीरीज ऑन फिलोसफी ऑफ माइंड इन अ लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड अ जनरल इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द आइडेंटिटी थियोरी ऑफ माइंड वेर वी डिस्कस्ड वॉट आर द प्राइमरी uh debates which are going on in philosophy of mind and how does identity theory respond to those debates how does it shows a relationship between mind and the brain now moving forward with that introduction today we are going to specifically talk about the identity theory by jjc smart so jjc smart's identity theory is a philosophical theory of mind that proposes that mental states are identical to certain brain states so if you remember that we discussed while talking about the relationship between uh, mental processes and the physical processes we discussed that the identity theorists they argue that mental processes are in fact identical to the brain processes or the physical processes and jjc smart being one of the uh, identity theorist he also proposes that mental states are identical to certain brain states this theory gained popularity in mid uh, 20th century and was a response to the dualism that had dominated philosophy of mind until then we have also talked about the dual dualist theory in some of our pre- previous lectures where we saw that these dualists argue that there is a fundamental difference between mind and the body or mind and the brain where mind and the brain or the body are seen as two different substances so they believe in the dualism and this theory which is the identity theory is in fact a response to the dualism which had dominated philosophy of mind until then so smart's theory is often seen as a type of materialism as it posits that mental states can be reduced to physical processes in the brain so what is materialism materialism basically is a theory which reduces everything to the physical process and smart's theory uh, can be in fact seen as reducing the mental states to the physical processes in the brain and that's why uh, smart's theory is often seen as a type of materialism now in talking about smart's arguments for identity theory we will be focusing upon one of the very important papers written by jjc smart which is the sensations and brain processes so jjc smart's uh, sensation and brain processes is a seminal paper in the philosophy of mind that presents his argument for the identity theory of mind in this paper start uh, smart uh, starts by in a way refuting the traditional cartesian dualist view of the mind body problem which posits that mind and body are two distinct substances that interact with each other instead smart defends the identity theory of mind which holds that mental states are identical to certain brain processes he argues that sensations are identical to certain brain processes after doing that uh, smart begins his article by giving four theories of sensations he begins his article by supposing a roundish blurry edged after image which is yellowish towards its edge and is orange towards its center so he is taking the specific example of an after image which he describes it as a round and blurry edged which is yellowish at the edge and orange is towards its center by taking up this example of an after image he raises a question that what is it 
that he is reporting here of an after image okay so when if somebody is having or is experiencing an after image what is it that we report of an after image is it something physical or is it psychical or is it nothing at all fine so having an after image what does that uh, after image really signify is that after image something physical is it psychical or is it nothing at all so to uh, respond to what it actually is he gives four hypotheses to explain what we are reporting when we report an after image so let us first understand what an after image actually is so an uh, after image is a visual phenomena where an image persists in one's vision after the original image has been removed for example if one stares at a bright light or object and then looks away they may see a ghostly image of that object that gradually fades away so let's say uh, if you are looking at an object or it is a very bright object which has a very bright light and then you just shift your uh, look away from that object you still see some image of that object so it's not the object as such that you are seeing but you are seeing an after image of that object and gradually it fades away just like imagine how you look at the sun when you look at the sun first and then you look away there is a kind of after image which persists for some time and you uh, see in a way a ghostly image of the sun and gradually it fades away so what is it that you know we are reporting here that we are having this experience of an after image so the four hypotheses offered by smart in reporting an after image are first that uh, we are not reporting anything at all second we are remote uh, reporting an irreducibly psychical something third we are reporting our behavioral dispositions and fourth we are reporting a brain process so these are the four hypotheses on uh, which shows that what is it that you are reporting when you are having an after image either the first one you are not reporting anything or it could be the second one that you are reporting an irreducibly psychical something or you are reporting a behavioral disposition or the fourth one is that you are reporting a brain process or a neurological process that's taking place inside your brain so in the initial sections of uh, sensations and brain processes in this paper specifically you'll see that the initial sections a uh, smart examines these four distinct perspectives on the nature of our statements about subjective experiences such as i am experiencing a yellowish orange after image and these perspective as i had already mentioned they include and the first one being we are not reporting anything so this is the view that smart attributes to wittgenstein this outlook suggests that reports of sensations are more akin to expressions like crying or wincing rather than descriptions of actual event so what we are really doing is let's say if you are having a particular sensation let's say you felt pain so in reporting about the pain you are not really reporting anything you are just uh, giving an expression let's say if you get hit by the chair you will uh, say ouch so that's not really reporting something that's in a way showing your expression so here jjc smart is exploring the nature of our report about subjective experiences such as an after image and pain he notes that some philosophers as just mentioned 
uh, Wittgenstein have questioned whether such reports are really reports at all or whether they are just expressions of a temptation to describe our experiences in a certain way. Here Smart acknowledges that there, are, there may be uh, some sense in which reports of subjective experiences are not straightforward descriptions of those experiences. For example, when we report a pain, we may be doing more than just describing a sensation. We may also be indicating that we are in a certain agitated or distressed state. So, it could be more than just describing a sensation. In fact, it could be uh, indicating that I am in this distressed or this agitated state. However, Smart also suggests that there is still some sense in which we are reporting something when we describe our subjective experiences. Even if our reports are not straightforward descriptions of those experiences, they may still convey some information about them. So, to some level, it still it could be considered as reporting something. And the example given here is that when you report an after image, we may be conveying information about the color and the shape of the art, uh, after image. Even if our report is not a perfect description of what we are experiencing. So again, imagine that how you looked at a bright object and then you, uh, you know, look away from that object and you have an after image of that object. And then you try to describe it to someone that you are seeing a particular color and a particular shape of that uh, in that after image. So even if our report is not perfect description, it, there could be a case where we are not able to completely describe what we are experiencing. Even then it could be considered as a report of our after image, even when it is not in its entirety. Now coming to the second hypothesis, which is that we are reporting an irreducibly psychical something. This goes naturally with a dualist view of mental properties on which events like having after images are distinct from any uh, physical events. And here SMART appeals to Oakham's razor which is that the simplest explanation is usually the explanation that is most accurate. And here SMART argues that scientific explanations increasingly view organism as a physiochemical mechanisms and that even human behavior will one day be explainable in mechanistic terms. So he invokes this Oakham's razor which suggests that the simplest explanation is usually the correct one and contends that it is implausible to have one exception to the physicalist picture of the world and namely the states of consciousness which in fact was proposed by the dualists. So Smart here argues that if states of consciousness are not identical to the physical brain processes, then they would be nomological danglers or unexplained anomalies that violate the laws of physics. So they will not be able to be in a correlation with the laws of physics or they will not follow the laws of physics because we are not seeing the states of consciousness to be identical with the physical processes in the brain. So he concludes that for these reasons he cannot believe that sensations and states of consciousness are not identical to physical brain processes. 
and as we know that the dualists they keep these two things as distinct from each other they say that states of consciousness are different from the uh, physical brain processes and that's what is being criticized by smart he is saying that uh, you know following the laws of physics we cannot keep these two things as distinct from each other in fact we have to see them as identical to each other in fact they are identical to each other so states of consciousness are <clears throat> in fact identical to the physical brain processes and in that way it is able to come in conformity with the laws of physics otherwise it is denying the laws of physics if we are keeping these two things as distinct from each other so smart's main objection to dualism is that it is hard to see how it could fit into a scientific view of the world according to which there is nothing in the world but increasingly complex arrangements of physical constituents the dualists believe that this scientific view of the world is incomplete and in addition to increasingly complex arrangements of physical constituents there are conscious states but smart thinks that this view of consciousness as something over and above the physical is hard to believe and that is what i was trying to convey here that smart is criticizing the dualists on this very point that first of all it will not be in conformity with the laws of physics it won't be able to explain how uh, it in the scientific terminologies because we are keeping the state of consciousness to be distinct from the physical states that are taking place in the brain and smart believes that holding this idea and holding that uh, consciousness is something over and above the physical is very hard to believe and in fact comes in contradiction to the laws of physics and therefore he rejects the third hypothesis as well moving on to the uh, sorry the second hypothesis moving on to the third hypothesis now which is that in reporting an after image we are reporting our behavioral dispositions this goes naturally with the behaviorist view of sensations on which sensations are patterns of dispositions to perform certain actions so here an after image is explained uh, or reported on the behavioral aspect or uh, reporting an after image is like reporting our behavioral dispositions the fourth is that we are reporting a brain process this goes naturally with an identity theory of sensation and other mental events on which they are identical with brain processes so this is the position that smart aims to defend which is this last hypothesis where we are saying that reporting an after image is like reporting a brain process where we are seeing that sensations are identical to the brain processes and that is what smart aims to defend and he dismisses the behaviorist views because after uh, after image sensations are not consistently associated with any particular behavior or disposition he expresses his uncertainty about whether the wittgensteinian view that sensation Uh, statements are expressions of behavioral dispositions is sufficient to account for the phenomenon of uh, subjective experience while the author finds the expressive account of sensation statements attractive 
he also believes that it may not fully capture the richness of a uh, subjective experience so what's happening here is with if you look at the overall uh, arguments that are being presented here the author is grappling with the difficult question of how to account for subjective character of conscious experience within a materialist framework and that's what he uh, is grappling with here and in the coming up arguments we will see that he tries to explain it in terms of the physicalist aspect and that's how we say that smart is a materialist because he is going to reduce all the uh, mental processes and mental events to the brain processes and in fact see them as identical to each other so smart's identity theory goes as follows that he attempts to clarify the thesis that sensations are brain processes the thesis is not that terms such as after image or ache have the same meaning as brain processes of type x where x refers to a specific type of brain process rather if a sensation is being reported then it is the report of a process that happens to be a brain process so there is something very important here it is that uh, this thesis is not in fact you know uh, saying that or uh, it's not in reporting an after image it's not that it means the same as brain process of type x where x is a particular type of brain process or a particular type of neurological process in the brain in fact if a sensation is being reported then it is a report of process that happens to be a brain process and that's what that's what smart is trying to argue here so this means that the thesis does not propose that statements about sensations can be translated into statements about brain processes additionally it does not suggest that the logical structure of a sensation statement is identical to that of brain statement the thesis being proposed is that sensations are not separate from brain processes rather sensations are brain processes themselves therefore a sensation statement is a report of brain process which happens to be the thing being reported so however this does not imply that sensation statements can be translated into brain processes statement or that their logic is the same and uh, we we are going to discuss it further that how uh, he takes up various analogies to describe this idea of how sensations are brain processes though they both have different logic and the sensation statements cannot really be translated into the brain process statement so please stay with us we are going to continue our uh, discussion on jgc smarts identity theory in the next lecture where we will see how he has uh, defended this theory along with this we will also see what are the various objections that have been raised again the identity theory and how smart responds to those criticisms or the objections so thank you and please watch our next video to follow up the lecture